Alrighty, in this video, we're going to do a quick example of a data flow in Power Platform. So what is a data flow? A data flow is a self-service cloud-based data preparation technology. Um, it allows uh, customers to retrieve, transform, and load data directly into the Microsoft Dataverse, Power BI workspaces, or even your organization's Azure data lake storage account. Um, what they do is it allows you to choose from multiple sources and you grab that data and Power Query um, is the connection between your data and the cloud. So for this example, we're going to do a very simple one. Um, I have a list of leads here in my ex in an Excel file. We're going to use a an Excel document located in my uh, OneDrive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these leads and I'm going to push them from this Excel file into my Dynamics 365 environment and create these records. Now the big difference between this example and just you know loading leads into Dynamics using an import is that this will now be connected to my table in Dynamics. So once I connect this, if I come in here and change a phone number or an email address or you know add an additional row, that information can automatically update inside of Dynamics. So again, I've got just uh, some some made up leads here in my Excel file, and you can see here in my Dynamics site that I do not currently have any open leads. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to my Power Apps um, environment. I've got my testing environment spun up. The first thing we're we're going to need to do is we actually have to define a key for the table that we want to load information into. So what this key does is it provides a unique value for whatever record type I'm importing. Um, some tables will already have a key um, denoted um, for this lead entity, it does not. So for this example, I'm going to use the email address for the lead as their unique identifier. So just back from the beginning, if I'm on my home page, I'm going to click into my tables. And I'm going to locate the lead. And in this next screen, we'll flip over to the keys tab. And we're going to add a key. So I'm just going to name this email address. And I'm going to select the field on the lead that I want to define as my key. So there's the email and click done. So once the key is set, we need to make sure we save the table. And once that table is saved, we can move on to the next step and actually create our data flow. So over here on the left side of your screen, you'll see data flows. And I'm going to create a new data flow. And I'll name this one leads. And then select create. Now you'll notice that there are a ton of different options to choose when you're selecting where your data is coming from. Um, for this example, we are going to use an Excel workbook, but you'll notice you can use a, you can select a PDF file. You can do a SharePoint list. You can do a SharePoint folder. Um, you know, an Oracle database. There's tons of different places that you can grab your data from. Um, a big use case for these data flows is to migrate data from a legacy on premise system. So if you know you're a firm that is deciding to you know move to the cloud, you can use a data flow to extract that data from your currently used on-premise system and upload that information into the cloud. So I'm going to select Excel workbook. I'm going to browse my OneDrive. 
and this is my example leads list that I had selected or shown you uh, in this file over here. And then I'm going to select select and then next. Oh, well, another really cool thing here is, you know, I only have one sheet in my Excel file, but you can have multiple sheets in one file and then you'll just need to select which one you want to pull in. So there's my sheet one. You can see that information is displayed here for me. And next I'm going to click transform. And this is going to take that data from Excel and pull that into Power Query. Now Power Query I mentioned earlier is the, you know, kind of the middle ground between where your data lives and where it's going. Um, for those of you familiar with Power Query, there's a ton of different things you can do you know, within this product to manipulate that data and then pull that information in. Um, there will be another video that I do on a more complex data flow where we're actually manipulating the data, doing some calculations and pulling that in, um, which is awesome because you can alleviate the need for you know, calculated or roll-up fields which you know, for those you might end up creating several different fields to perform a calculation. So this removes the, the need for that. So I don't actually need to make any manipulations here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And here it's going to ask me to define where I want this information to go. So you can load it into a brand new table um, an existing table or do not load. So if you select this do not load, that's more for when you have multiple sheets in your Excel file. So for this example, I'm going to find my lead table. Um, one kind of negative with when you're selecting your your record type or your entity is that you can't use the keyboard to jump down to um, the record type you want to select, you have to scroll. So once we select lead, it's going to ask us to map our columns. So the columns that I'm going to map are just the basics. Um, let's pull this Excel over here so I know which ones to grab. Um, so I'm going to grab the topic. Um, one thing you'll notice here is you actually really need to know the, the schema name. If you've got a lot of um, custom fields built out those are going to be located you know whatever your publisher is so for the for this particular environment mines or mine are just um, the default publisher i don't i don't have an actual um, publisher loaded so i am going to select first name here i've got first name so we'll match those up we've got uh, last name here so we'll map over our last name um, we have topic. Probably should have looked up these schema names before I started this. Topic's probably not even called topic. Yeah, we can easily check this real quick. Just a second. All right, topic is subject, of course. So there's our subject. We're going to map topic there. And let's see, let's do, we've got job title. Which is just job title. And we'll use mobile phone here. And we've got lead source, it's lead source code. Our 
rating, which is the lead quality code. And then, of course, we need to make sure we've got our email address because that is our key. It'll tell you which what your key column is when you're mapping these these fields. That is one that we definitely have to have. Um, this delete rows that no longer exist in the query output um, is something you can do if you're going to be maintaining a holistic list directly from your Excel file. Um, you can select this, but keep in mind if you delete a row from your Excel file, it will then delete that row from Dynamics. So I don't, I wouldn't really recommend it, but you certainly can if, if you're you know, sure that you want to maintain that list um, in your file or source. All right, we'll click next. And here we have an option. Do we want this to refresh manually? Or do we want to refresh automatically? Um, so automatic gives you the option to refresh every certain amount of minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months. Um, it'll let you pick when you want to start. You can pick specific days and times. And then if you want a failure notification to be sent to the data flow owner, you can select this option here. Would definitely recommend this. Um, there are times where a data flow may fail um, if you know a certain field is you know missing or corrupt. So definitely a good option to uh, check that box. And for this example, we're just going to refresh manually. I'm going to go ahead and publish my data flow. And fingers crossed, we don't get any errors. It shouldn't um, should start refreshing in a moment. It shouldn't take very long because we've only got six leads in our file. So we can see the refresh is in progress. Now, if you did set this up to refresh automatically, once it refreshes, um, you would see when the next refresh is. All right. So our refresh was successful. Um, if there was an issue with your field mapping, um, you would see a little error message here um, that you have the ability to download that log file. So now if we flip back over to Dynamics. Here we see there are were no current leads. If I refresh, we should see six leads. And there they are. There's the leads directly from my Excel file. I open one of these up. We can see that it populated the information based on our field mapping. So we've got our mobile phone, our email address, um, interested in our products was our topic. So pretty cool and very, something that could be very useful. Um, now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to Add an additional line item here. Plus one test. Now, if I was to um, not change this email address, we would get an error message because that is that has to be a unique key. There we added an additional. Um, line item in our Excel file. So now if we go back to our data flow and refresh that manually, it should pull in that additional lead automatically for us. All right, successful refresh. Jump back over to our leads in CRM, and we can see that we now have seven, and there's that testing lead that we just created. 
all right hope everybody enjoyed the video thanks for watching and we'll see you next time